The term GOAT uh, is actually applied far too often in these days, but in this particular case, uh, it certainly applies. As uh, Jerry Rice, the Hall of Famer, three-time Super Bowl champion, uh, joins me now from the shores of Lake Tahoe, Nevada, where sports celebrities each year participate in the annual American Century Championship. Jerry, welcome to VNC. Well, thank you. It's, it's uh, great being here. First question uh, is an easy one. How's the golf game? Are you ready for this weekend? You know, you know, I get asked that question a lot and, you know, how's the golf game? And, you know, one thing about golf, you just never know. And, you know, you could put all the preparation in the practice uh, and you still have to go out on that golf course and you have to uh, apply it and you have to uh, create shots. And you have to drain putts. So my mindset is that I really don't know how my golf game is right now, but I'm looking forward to the opportunity of going out there and competing. Hey, answer this for me. Why does it seem like quarterbacks always seem to have the best golf games? I mean, it, for whatever reason, uh, Romo's been very good recently. I know uh, former Washington quarterback, uh, uh, another fellow former Super Bowl MVP, Mark Rippon, was always uh, really good at Why do quarterbacks always seem to succeed uh, on the links? I think the quarterbacks, they don't get beat up like uh, the guys in other positions. You got to think about that because as a receiver, as a, you know, say, an offensive lineman, uh, defensive lineman, linebackers, uh, defensive backs, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot more contact happening on the football field. And, and plus these guys too, man, you know, they able to break things down just a little bit better than uh you know other guys in other positions hey, i mentioned uh, earlier that the the term goat seems to be tossed around far too often these days um in your mind for someone who is is a true goat uh in in his craft and in his field is it a little bit of an insult when you hear it you know applied so often no. to so many people well, GOAT is just not for athletes. It's, it could be a frontline worker. It could be an entrepreneur. It could be people in other positions. Anybody that daring to be great. So, yeah, you know, I, I don't have a problem with it at all. Uh, the, the weirdest thing is that, you know, when you said that to me, it made me feel a little weird because I, I never think of myself as being the greatest of all time. But, you know, I was always... Uh, trying to get 100 percent and i wanted to leave everything on the football field and, and i think it's an honor for you to say that but uh yeah it, it's just for people that's really just daring to be great on a given day well it's, it's very humble of you to say that i know many people do though uh, consider you to be uh, the goat in fact nearly 17 years after your last game you're still the nfl's all-time leader in receptions <laughs> recept that's receiving crazy. yards total yards um total touchdowns with 208. Is there one of those stats that means more to you than any other? No, you know what? Because it was never about the records. It was about the love of the game and always going out there playing for the fans. And I had great teammates to put me in a position where I could, uh, you know, really break a lot of records and, uh, and I give them all the credit, but you know, I just enjoy putting that uniform on, going out there in, in front of like, you know, 30 to 60,000 people and just being a little kid on the football field. So, you know, but you know, it, it was a blessing for so many accolades and, and all of that, but it's all because of my teammates. Well, you mentioned the love of the game. Tom Brady won his seventh ring at the age of 43. Um, you started your final season at the age of 42, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what is it like to, to exhibit that love of the game to a point where it almost seems like they have to tear the jersey off of you? <laughs> well, you know, if I could still play today, I would still be on that football field. But, you know, uh, the clock was ticking. Uh, father age uh, finally caught up to me. And I, I really have to commend Tom Brady for what he's doing on the football field. You know, he leaves uh, the Patriots and he goes to uh, the Bucks and he wins another championship. I think he wants to play till he's like 45 or more. And, and, and I think because of the position that he's playing, uh, it, he's capable of doing that. But, uh, you know, uh, man, if I had a wish, uh, I probably would say I would love to put that uniform 
back on of the San Francisco 49ers and get back on that football field. Well, yeah, and you, of course, know uh, somewhat what Tom Brady went through uh, having played the first 16 years of your career in San Francisco before uh, heading to the Oakland Raiders. Um, you're 58, uh, and yet you still look half that age. So you said you'd love to put the, the uniform back on. If the 49ers came to you, if Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch came to you and said, we need one quarter from you, Jerry, <laughs> could you do it? That's hypothetical. We're not going to think like that. I'm not going to put that in my head because you know what? Without a heartbeat, I would put that uniform back on, get back on the field. What do you see, uh, Jerry, when you watch the game today? Because it is somewhat different. Uh, for instance, I wonder what kind of numbers you would have put up considering how they protect receivers more now uh, because you made your living in large part over the middle and you were – you know, privy to being able to, to get blown up over the middle. Rules are much different now. So what do you see when you watch today's game? And do you think at all, man, I wonder what I could have done uh, even more of had I played in this era? You know, I never think about uh, or I wonder about if I was playing in this era, you know, the numbers that I would put up. I played in the era that I wanted to play in. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if the ball was being thrown to the right, uh, and I was on the left side, I was still getting hit on the left side. If I was going across the middle, you had linebackers trying to take my head off. So, you know, I, I, I think we made the game uh, a lot better for the guys that are really playing the game now. Uh, it's a safer game, but, you know, I, I wouldn't go back and change anything. The era that I played in, uh, it was real special. Yeah, it was special for every one of us uh, able to witness as, as well. Do you happen to have a favorite receiver? Uh, because this really is a, a tremendous age and era uh, for receivers right now in the National Football League. Uh, so many talented guys. Do you happen to have one in particular that you love watching perhaps more than any other? Well, I still love watching all the receivers, but, you know, I'm, I'm still a Larry Fitzgerald guy, man. <laughs> you know, uh, what, he, what he brings to the game, uh, his uh, mentorship, uh, his leadership, uh, you know, it's, it's really special, and I would love to see that guy uh, win a Super Bowl. A couple more for you, and I'll let you go. Uh, historically, black colleges and, and universities uh, have really come up in the news more and more uh, as of late. You're a proud alum of Mississippi Valley State University, which is in the SWAC, uh, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, same conference that houses Jackson State, whose coach is your former teammate, Deion Sanders. Uh, he certainly yeah. created a, a tremendous amount of buzz in Jackson, Eddie George, uh, former Tennessee Titan, Dallas Cowboy is uh, now on the sideline at Tennessee State in Nashville. Do you ever give any thought whatsoever uh, to, to maybe <laughs> putting on that whistle yeah. and coming back and coaching yourself? You know, I've been asked that question so many times. I, I, and, and I tell people, I think I, I left everything on the football field because I didn't take any shortcuts. I worked every day. Uh, I felt I had to earn everything, my work ethic, the preparation behind it. So no, I, uh, you know, as a mentor or something like that, uh, being around, being associated uh, with a lot of the players from the San Francisco 49ers, they can pick my brain. I, I can really help them in different situations, but I have never thought about coaching. I, I love what, uh, uh, Deion Sanders, uh, Eddie George, what they're doing, and uh, they're going to bring a lot of attention to those schools, and uh, I support them 100%. Speaking of those schools, uh, there was a period in the 80s where three out of the four Super Bowl MVPs were HBCU alums. Uh, you had Richard Dent, you had Doug Williams, really? and yourself. Uh, yeah, Richard Dent, Tennessee State. Uh, really? Doug, Doug Williams, Grambling, and yourself. Uh, so that Super Bowl's 20. 22 and 23, just how important uh, should people understand uh, HBCUs and the history of those players? Uh, how important have you all been for the NFL? I think it's very important. And, uh, and I think the guys that you named off, you know, their work ethic and, and, and what they tried to exemplify, because we knew the pressure that was put on us uh, to go to the next level and being able to be productive and bring bringing attention to those schools it will open the door for so many other athletes 
And I never wanted to let Mississippi Valley State down, I'm sure, you know, with Doug Williams, uh, Gramlin and all of that. And it was a pleasure uh, to really play for HBCU. And I wouldn't go back and change anything. I get asked this all the time, you know, because I got letters from all the major schools like USC, Notre Dame, all of those big schools. But I decided to go to uh, Mississippi Valley State University, and I think it was uh, the best choice for me. He is the most prolific scorer in the history of the National Football League, 13-time Pro Bowler, three-time Super Bowl champion, Jerry Rice, Hall of Famer. Thanks so much for joining us on BNC. Thanks for having me.